Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with day 11 of my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts video series. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make my fun and easy to whip up fabric envelopes. All right, now this project is gonna be another quick and easy make. We're working with plastic snaps as the closure here, so they're totally reusable, but I like to use these when we're giving just a quick and easy gift, a handwritten note with a gift card or some cash. This is gonna whip up so quickly, I think you're gonna be making a ton of them. Now let's go over the supplies you'll need so you can jump right into making your fabric envelopes. So for this project, we're going to start by cutting out our template of our interfacing, and it's going to be the stiffer interfacing. It's called Pellon Peltex. I happen to have the one-sided fusible here, but you can also use the sew-in version or even the double-sided fusible. Any of the Peltex will work fine for this project. I've cut the Peltex to six and three quarters inches across by ten and a half inches long. Then we're going to fold it in half. You can even put a clip here. We're gonna measure three inches down from one of these short edges. I'm gonna choose this one. And this is just so we can use it as a guide of where to stop curving our edge. So three inches is gonna be right here. You can take scissors or a rotary cutter. You can even draw this curve in or you can give it any shape that you want to. I'm gonna start off here where the fold is, start off flat next to my fold and just make a slight curve so that I finish off on the edge going flat right where that three inch mark is. So when you open it, this is the template that we'll be working with. Now we'll take our fabric. I'm gonna fold it onto itself because we're gonna cut out two matching fabric pieces from our template. And I'm just gonna use the same fabric for the inside and outside. You can change it up, of course, but it's a great scrap buster. Then I'll place my Peltex template on top to use as my guide and carefully cut around it. Now we're gonna place wrong side of one fabric to one side of the Peltex and the other wrong side of the fabric piece to the other side of the Peltex. So if you're using a double-sided fusible, go ahead and fuse this all together now. Because I only have a one-sided fusible, I'm gonna fuse one side and I'm going to spray baste the other side. So I'll fuse this one first with my iron. For the second side, we'll spray baste. Now, because the fabric tends to move on us a little bit, it's very important that all the edges match up nice and flush on the side. So you can take scissors or a rotary cutter and just cut and shave a little bit off the sides to make sure that nothing is sticking out further. Like here I can see that I have more fabric sticking out from the other side, so I'm just gonna cut everything clean and even. This will ensure that we get some better zigzag stitches when we go to finish off these edges. Now we're at the sewing machine and we're gonna set our machine to a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna change the settings here for stitch width and stitch length. So stitch width is set to 3.6, that's the default on my machine. I want it to be a longer, like wider zigzag so it comes in a little bit further. So I'm gonna bump that up to about a 4.0 or 4.2 would be fine, I'll keep it here. And then the stitch length is gonna be the spacing in between the zigzags and that's the one that you want to be nice and small so that it covers more area and doesn't have that much raw edge fraying on the side here. You can go really, really tight on this like 0.2 or 0.4 whatever. I'm gonna keep it at around a 0.8 or a 1.0 in millimeters and that tends to work okay. We're gonna zigzag stitch all the way around the entire piece and I prefer to put the side of the fabric that's gonna be on the outside of my envelope so if this is the fabric that I'm gonna see here, I wanna stitch from that side, because stitches tend to look better from that side. Now when it zigs and zags, your job is gonna to be to feed the fabric through so that on the zig and zag, when it comes to the right on the needle, it goes just off the edge of the project. So I'll show you how I do it, and usually that um, makes sense to see it. Now that that's done, 
This was the outside, so we'll flip it to the lining side and fold this up right to where you see the end of the curve to basically where it was that three inch line that you marked. I'll bring it up, put a couple of clips, just one on each side is plenty. And then we're just gonna stitch down the sides. And I like to use a triple straight stitch for this. It has a cute decorative finish. It also is a little bit bolder of a straight stitch, so it pops out more, which is great if you're using a fun color of thread, but you can also just use a straight stitch. I do recommend that you back stitch at the beginning and at the ends, no matter what straight stitch you use. So I'm making sure that I line up the two sides here so that they're even, and we'll stitch at about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So here's what we have so far, and all we have left to do is to attach some type of a closure. We're gonna use plastic snaps because they're quick, easy, inexpensive, and they come in a variety of different colors. Here's an example that I've already attached the snap to, so this is what we're gonna be doing. And I like to buy a kit online that includes the snap setting pliers, the all that you need to poke the hole in your project, and then I get an assortment of different colors of snaps, so I'll include a link for you in the description box on where you can get something like that if you're interested. Now the parts you'll need for one full working snap are two end caps, and that's smooth on one side and has a prong on the other, two of those, and then you'll need a male end and a female end. So flip the lid down, and you can measure and find the halfway point, but I can eyeball this. The middle is about here, and I like to come up about three quarters of an inch to one inch from this bottom edge, and I think that's pretty centered there. I'm gonna poke a hole only through the flap, like this. Then we'll place the end cap with the prong from the top side, so it should look smooth on the outside. And then here, I will come in with the male end and install that. I like to push it down, then we'll take our snap setting pliers, center it and squeeze, and that end is done. And I always like to install the male end first because it sticks out. So when I come down here and close it, I can just press this part down and it's gonna create a little circular dent that I now know it's the perfect spot for me to poke my hole in to install the female end. So when you poke through here, make sure you don't go through the entire project, just through the front bit and the end cap goes on the inside of this one so that the female end can be exposed up top and the snap will actually shut properly. So squeeze it down, push our pliers in, and it's okay if you wrinkle up the fabric to get the, uh, the pliers to reach, give it a squeeze. And that's all there is when installing a working snap in any of your projects. And there you have it, a quick and easy way to make some fun and functional fabric envelopes. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it across the different social media sites and with your crafty friends. And of course, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you tomorrow for the last video in this series, day 12.